Hello there, it's Chris here from Becker's Models and welcome back to the next build log of my Academy CH53E Super Stallion and in the last video I went over how I was going to rivet the tail and then move on well I didn't get it all done but here we are, I'm halfway there and um, so that's the main tail piece which I've just laid down the last set of rivets on the spine there just a few minutes ago. So just to give you a comparison of what it looks like on this side compared to, and I've got to be very careful here because these aren't all set, let's turn it over and smooth the baby bottom. Okay so you can see that it, it does add quite a lot of detail adding these uh, these rivets and I've had a couple of questions about how 3D are they? Well I don't know if you can see at the top there I've put a line of rivets, a line of rivets i put a liver of rivets, I've put a line of rivets down the, the top there, and I'll see if the camera can zoom in. But yeah, it's definite when you put your finger over the, the dried rivets, I won't do it on these ones, they're not fully set yet. Uh, these ones are actually on this side. Can you hear that? Do, 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 do. See if I can put it up to the edge there. You might, you might be able to see it, I might not, but yeah, it's definite, definitely there. Now the problem with, uh, I think I said this in the last build log, I'll keep this nice and sweet and short, but this takes forever because, I mean, line, uh, it takes forever for a lot of reasons and, you know, I'll just show you here with my, um, okay, you've got, to, you've got to make, the way I've, I've approached this is I've counted the rivets, literally, I've made sure the rows are, are correct, I've, I've, you know, there's, there's some, the first time I've used uh, staggered rivets here on, on this panel line here, okay, so you need staggered, you've got double rows, you've got single rows, you've got to go, fasteners so you've got to make sure you've got the right sort of rivets you've got to cut them out um, and measure them to the, to the right length uh, you've got to get a sequence going because it takes a minute or two for a decal to, to set in the water and then not only that once you've got it down it takes a few minutes to move them around like you know sort of maneuvering around curved surfaces if you want to do any rivets that overlap each other well the first set of rivets have to have to dry completely or they're just going to move around in a big mush and then once the rivets have dried, and it usually, I'm usually leaving it over overnight for them to fully set, then I have to hit them with the microsole. This is what Archer recommends. I haven't tried any other um, setting solutions yet, but this one seems to work okay. Let that set, and then if there's any silvering, or not really silvering, but if there's any sort of um, things that are still uh, prominent, like you might be able to see that some of this riveting film is coming up against some of these raised photo etch parts. Well, I just need to prick that with a little knife, put another set of microsole down. And you can see this just takes time and time and time and time. So, um, and then I chose the most complicated rivet pattern in the whole bloody aircraft to do first. I uh, said so the other ones will be a doddle. Oh, and the other thing I've worked out is I really can't make the runs any longer than about 30 to 40 mil. I tried doing full 60 millimeter, you know, two inch plus runs. But um, yeah, it, it sort of tears apart uh, halfway through not all the time but sometimes so I want something that's repeatable and, and easy to do in the future so I'm trying to keep all the runs to about 30 mil or just over an inch um, so when I do the, the longitudinal runs on the fuselage that's how I'm going to do it. I'm just going to chop it up into little bits because then I know it's certain it's reliable so anyway next um, thing to do is obviously set that get that going and then like I've done with these bottom rivets here I've actually hit them with a couple of flat coats of where is it? Have I got it here? No, I don't. Uh, GX113 Gunze um, flat coat, beautiful flat coat. Gets rid of all the carrier film. You you just build it up closely next to the carrier film. It's all gone. Um, but the next thing I need to do is the photo etch. So you can see those parts there that just go on there like that. Okay, I've already primed them both sides. I don't need to, to paint them. I won't cover up any bits. So they all need to be. Once this is fully set, I can handle it with my fingers and and whatever. I'll put the photo etch done and then. See these big slots here, I can put the stabilator on and it'll be finished. And then I can move on to the fun bit, which is detailing up the interior. So here it is, it's fully riveted and I've put the photo etch grills on. I had one little uh, error at the top on the other side. I, I completely uh, lost this tiny little piece there, so I had to make it up with some spare mesh. And I had a bit of a spill of some enamel thinner on there, which proved that these rivets, once you put the flat coat on, Actually, it's got several flat coats of the GX113, which is nice and robust, so you can hear that. Okay, so those rivets are really nice in place, no problems at all. It is time to finish the tail, so I need to put the stabilator on. So I've got it here, okay, and the fit is, uh, is it the right way up? Yes, it is, Miss Jane. The fit is pretty good, like that. 
Okay. Even press fit like that, and I've just got to put the strut in and put the um, the skid hook on. I'm not sure if I've explained what I've done with that one, but I uh, I've reprofiled the the skid there was way too fat and it also needs a reinforcement plate which is out of sheet styrene there and I had to modify the the way it lands because uh, as designed in the kit academy had done the right thing and they had it profiled so it was set up to be like that so it's extended but my particular aircraft is actually going to be somewhat like that so I had to modify the um the things there, so I'll do that last after I get this stabilator on. So let's do it live. Why not do it live? So I'll get some Revel contactor that's not Tamiya extra thin. That's Revel. I'll put that on the mating surface there, just down the middle to give it a bit of bite. I have dry fitted this first to see if it works, and it does. So let's put that in there like that. So that'll give me a bit of play while I get the stabilator. Now I believe it goes that way. I'll see if I can do this on camera. So, oops, not long enough. Who knew? No, it is long enough. I have tried this before. Famous last words. So that's finally done. I've got the stabilator on there. I had it the strut the wrong way around. And I've got the tail on. I've just glued that on, so hopefully that'll stay in there. And you see I've had to modify that, that arm a little bit to get it in. So yeah, the tail is pretty much finished, apart from, well, it needs a, a light at the top there, but I'm not putting that on just yet, because it'll be a clear light. Let's see what it looks like with the, uh, with the, with the rotor. Uh, which way does it go? Let's have a look. I think it goes like that. Okay, there we are. That part of the elephant is done. <laughs> Let's move on to the rest of it. Time to detail up the uh, interior of the CHSE 3 I've started here, I'll show you why I've done these little bits here first, but this, this is the inside piece that goes inside the, uh, the fuselage. So that's the fuselage half. So I wanted to get this done uh, before I started on the outside and <laughs> The, the setup I want to do, the little, the little, <laughs> the diorama I want to do, you're not actually going to see much of the inside. The ramp will be down, you will see the interior. So I'm not going to go nuts, you know, detailing up the interior, but some, some effort needs to be done. I mean, that's basically what you get. You get a few seats and actually wrong. I think I'm going to have to convert them into their benches. I'm going to have to convert them into individual seats. Uh, and I've got the Ebbard interior set and it's got a few pieces on there, particularly some of the junction boxes and some so so forth, but I'll put some reference pictures up here while I'm talking. There is a lot of stuff going inside here. Luckily this particular version has got this sound blanket um, insulation stuff on it. I've, some of the photos I've got show when they strip this out, you can just see a, you know, it's a, it's a nest of wires and hydraulics and, and so forth throughout. But um, the point of this bit, this update is, and I'll zoom in here in a second. So at the rear here, this is where you could, the, um, the ramp comes down here, okay? And so the ramp's gonna be sort of like that on, in profile. This is, what, this is the right-hand side. Uh, there's literally no detail here. There's just a few little reinforcement plates, which are kind of accurate, and these frames, which are not quite dimensionally accurate. If I was gonna do a 100% accurate job, I'd strip this all out and rebuild all these frames. Uh, but what I'm doing is good enough for what I need to have happen. Now you can probably see in the light there, you see these ejection pin marks that are on the uh, on some, some of these pieces. The quickest way to fill them up without losing this rib detail is just, I'm just cutting out a piece of styrene to fill it in. I've already done it on this one. And a lot more things have to have happen to bring this up to scale. So I'll bring you the left hand side. There we are. So what I've had to do there is all these small pieces of styrene, which are just um, evergreen. Okay, just two mil by very, very thin, 0.25. So it, once that's under a coat of primer, you, you won't be able to tell these, these extra pieces. And then I've added lots of shelves. There's actually lots of, I don't know what they are, shelf plates or reinforcements. Some are orientated this way. Some are, are more of a, a double shelf. And then on this hydraulic thing, you have to add a hydraulic line. There's a little pump housing here, and I've got some lines through there. So I'll just explain how I did all this. Um, for some of the 
the straight stuff I like to use this brass pipe okay 0.3 mil and then I've got the plus model lead wire this is also 0.3 mil but I've got all I've got all the um, the thicknesses there lead wire is good to play with but also I like using this midge tubing I did this on another another build which I need to finish one day and that's how I got these little connectors that you put on the on the pieces of brass wire there and down there as well for the larger pieces this is obviously milliput and this one here's a big cable and I just put a bit of tape there to show the strapping that they do and oh yeah also you might see there's there's also a myriad of tiny little ejection pin marks on all those frames I'd fill them in twice with red putty and then Mr. Surfacer to clean them up I've used the milliput here because on the reference photos I'll see if I can put a photo up here uh, each side has got two of these sort of small canvas bags I guess the crew chief use them for tools and things that are there so they're just small little pouches but then there's also, at least on one side, sometimes on two, there's this big red bag here. I don't know what's in it. Um, obviously, it's got some some, <laughs> some things inside it because it's quite heavy and full. And if I tilt this back, I'll lead you into another secret. I've also drilled out all of the frames. Can you see that? Okay, so they're all drilled out, all these lightning holes. But um, yeah, you can see that, that uh, the way I've molded that bag, it's heavy. So it's going to come down. I've also put some straps on there. The milliput's dirty because the sculpting tools I used are what I normally use to move pigments around. So I've got some pigments built into there. It'll all disappear under primer anyway. So um, yeah, I think that's basically about it. Uh, just some extra detail. Oh, also I had to, this um, flange that runs along here, which Academy have just done as a straight frame, is actually not correct. It's it's actually, there's a, there's a sheet metal or aluminium flange it goes all the way along that which is um, a bit wider and covers that frame and it's also got these gussets or reinforcement little things that I cut out and glued on I then need to add a staggered row of rivets all the way along there because they're, they're quite prominent but when this is all said and done I'll see if I can get some camera you're still not going to see much I mean but there'll be there'll be a you know if you look it'll, the angle you're able to look at it are probably about there <laughs> But you'll see all that detail, which is a lot better than just seeing, you know, that. Um, so I have to work on this side next. And what I've done, and I've lost it, because, no, here it is. Yeah, there is a fire extinguisher there, so let's just zoom back in again. And I'll wrap this section up so I can move on. But I scratch built a little fire extinguisher out of some leftover sprue and some card, so that'll just go in the corner there. Okay, and I need to do the same thing here with, with this side, just... Um, make that frame there fill in all the ejection pin marks there's, there's a different I like to do this every time I um I like to draw out a, a a map so I don't have to constantly go in between you know reference photos so I actually sketch it out so I end up filling a book like this full up of all this sort of stuff so this is what I need to do on this side I can read it you probably can't <laughs> but I'm gonna have to add a lot more wiring I think on this side uh, yeah and there's some heavy cables which leads me to the next piece and that's the roof so that's the um, but you don't see that goes into the inside. I'll just quickly show you how this is orientated. So there's the there's the ramp down there and upside down Miss Jane. That goes in there around about there. Um, okay, actually let's put the actual piece in, Chris. So that goes in like that. Oop, just lost my fire extinguisher. And that goes in there like so. I want to go down like this. You're not going to see a lot, are you? But you will see that there is a huge amount of cables and hydraulics and lines on the top, this top piece. So it's a relatively simple job, but I will add in lots and lots of layers. Um, probably won't see much on this side, but I'm still going to put it in. I'll put some reference photos up there again, of course, to show you what I've got installed. Because, um, yeah, I just want to have that sort of layer of, of you know, of complexity. So when you look in there, it's like, oh, it's not one sort of empty tunnel although there are going to be quite a few figures in the way as well so yeah that's pretty much the angle you're going to see it at so like I said the and obviously you won't see it that side because it'll be closed up but if you look very closely like that you might be able to see some of the ceiling so I'm going to have to add in quite a bit of quite a bit of cabling so that's what's going to happen next so the detailing of the rear ramp continues you've already seen that side and I've now completed this side with the fire extinguisher uh, and some made some junction boxes, a few extra wires and things. There's basically just a, a repeat of the other side, but there are some details that are a bit different. Um, yeah, so that's that's done. But as I continue down this way, there's going to be a lot more to 
to come along I, I realize I need to do cabling up the top here I need to make a frame around these windows because there's actually no frame in the kit and they, they're quite distinct they're painted in that bright chromite chromate yellow and there's actually um, I think they put on the particular aircraft I'm doing they, they actually put the bench seats they put them up high really up high here for the first row and there's also on the other side uh, there'll be lots more wiring and other things and cables and uh, you know there's a lot more to go so I'll get into that next but what I've been doing is quickly doing the roof so let me just widen out so I've just started on this and I had a bit of an accident last night because I um, spilt my bottle of Tamiya Extra Thin quick that was <laughs> almost half no more than halfway full and that was a sign for me to stop so it spilt on the mat and the, I just walked away but basically I'm just putting some some plastic down uh, I, I realize I actually don't need to detail any of this at all because one of those ramp pieces will actually completely cover that and what I did was and as you can see it's all it's somewhat ruined now but I did a I did a map and worked out from all my reference photos where to put all the uh, the wires and the junctions and what I have to do and the first thing I've done is just it's not what the academy have done is not dimensionally accurate um, in terms of depth there's actually uh, a framework here of you know cross pieces somewhat similar to this here so this is what it should be all the way across so they've just sort of covered it up with nothing so for me to replicate that i've just done these horizontal sort of struts here uh, i added a, a radio box or junction box it's supposed to be here there's a few lights that they've put in um probably see one there and there which is slightly raised but and i've got to find the piece for it i've lost it here it is uh, it actually is a lot higher than, than that you see you can barely see it it barely sticks out i'm actually going to use a piece of tube and just cover it like that but only say you know two mil high so because it's actually a dome light that that stands there the other thing i've done is put in a there's a large pipe that comes out of here so i've put that along and i'd started before i before i um <laughs> almost wrecked the bench I started to add the uh, this cabling and so I'm just doing this out of basic styrene because it takes no time at all to, to glue these things together compared to using brass so all I'm going to do is just layer in some cabling and thing but the thing I need to do the most and I'll put a photo up here is the lifting crane which is right in the middle here and there's a there's a large hatch as well so you might think well why am I going to all that effort down here particularly well the thing is if you if you line up Particularly, you know, with that hatch, and why, why am I making that light? Well, if you line up the pieces on um, at the back there, yeah, sure, you'll see a bit here at the back, and you might see that lifting lug that stands out. But what about at the front? Well, there just happens to be a window on this side and a door on the other side. Okay, and so if you do peer in, you will see um, that light plus a, a jungle of of wiring and so forth, and also along here, there's a small rudimentary. Uh, box there but that's actually going to be covered in wires so my plan is from here is to finish just roughly detailing up the the ceiling the roof what do you want to call it um, and then I'm going to work from I'm going to put that aside and then I'm going to work from the front back and I'm going to start with the cockpit next a quick halfway update on the roof ceiling construction so you can see I've added a fair bit there and so far apart from that little bit of wire there which was just tied off wasn't super glued I've just done this with straight styrene pieces and a few Greeblies I found in my little Greeblies bucket, which I'll quickly show you here. It's all little, little parts I've collected over the years and just keep them there and some of them come in handy like in this particular build. So I'll just quickly go over what I've done. Um, like I said, it's halfway. Uh, the next stage is to use some wire and cable, uh, you know, copper wire, some lead and so forth, just like I did on the, on the ramps. Uh, and to really mess this up so this is just the base even though this has taken a quite a while and I've gone down the rabbit hole and most of this won't be seen <laughs> uh, yeah basically I've just added some some strips down the middle to add a bit of you know texture that's that's these frames are all supposed to be here there's a hatch here with a recess edge that I've beveled off I've scratch built the uh, lifting plate and its little lug thing added some some bolts and rivets to that most of that won't be seen but it sort of approximates the shape I've added this uh, little hose reel here and I've added some some height to those those lights I think they're a little bit too tall I might just grind them off a little bit and uh, yeah so the view you'll actually see you'll see something like that okay and if you're real lucky something like that so it, just, it needs another layer of busyness 
So that's what I'll get to next with the uh, the wire and everything. I prefer to do whatever I can with styrene first because it's so easy to glue where it's getting wires and lead and everything down requires super glue, which I really don't like. All right, halfway, almost there. And here's the almost finished layer of extra busyness with wires and cables and and things to go on the roof. So it's, with those wires and things, just added another little layer. I will do a final one. I've bought some uh, easy line to do some bundling of, of cables and things, but that's going to be done after I've painted because it's already pre-painted. It's already white. Here it is, this stuff here. Okay, easy line, very thin stuff. And then you make some wiring harnesses with that. So I'm going to end the video here, this update, but I will give you a quick little uh, preview of what I've done next. And that's working on the back bulkhead and uh, this pipe will go up onto this roof see if I can do sort of a mock-up so it will kind of be like like that okay and so yeah I've still got more of the interior to do but I might for the next update I might skip ahead and because you know this is quite tedious and I'm getting a bit bogged down with it I might skip ahead and do some external stuff I might do some fuel tanks some sponsons some engines and things like that just to just to mix up it all has to be done so uh, yeah until next time thanks for watching